Did you see the new I Show Speed song? I was gonna, but I ran out of time doing a deep dive on the stable Ronaldo versus Jinxie drama that's happening right now. There's some seriously heavy stuff going on in this industry, man. Hold. Which side are you on? I just want everybody to get along. Boo. <laughs> okay, start lower so you have less gravitational. That was, that was it, that was it. I can do that. Did you see Kai Sinat get friend zoned by Tyla? Of course, bro, you're talking to a tier three sub. Who's Tyla, by the way? <laughs> oh, hold, hold. Nobody's answering the question. She's an R&B artist. Okay. She's not the R&B artist that sang Water, right? That's a different R&B artist with a four-letter name. That is her. I know music, bro. Okay, no, I know her then. I know her. Hold. 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 Go low so you got less gravitational. Incredible. And then this is a, a hell of a jump right here. Oh, we were, we were micrometers away. How many subs to get NL to do the dance? The dance, the one that the, the gingerbread man does on the, the smart freezers inside of Target. The Gangnam style dance. Was you ever an old Coke Zero Andy? What does this mean? Old Coke Zero. Hold! <laughs> they reformulated it in like 2015. Really? I didn't know that. I, uh, I've been a Coke Zero head ever since it was announced, but I did go through a period, I would say probably like 10 years of basically only drinking a Coke Zero like if I was at a restaurant, which sometimes it happened like 2X Weekly, 2X Pimpy, 3X Bape. Sometimes it happened like once a month. So I, I must have missed the, uh, the reformulation. It must have gone right by me. In no! And a Coke Zero as a treat? Sometimes, listen, I don't want to cause any problems. Oftentimes, my wife and I would go out for ramen, and it didn't seem like it mattered what the ramen place was. I would be like, yeah, you know, give me, I'll take the classic Rekka ramen, everything standard. Maybe I'll go chashu men on that bitch. Maybe I'll get three extra pieces of pork. Also, I'll have a Diet Coke. And then they say, sure, no problem. And then I wait, you know, eight minutes, and the ramen comes out. And then like five minutes after the ramen comes out, they're like, by the way, here's your Coke Zero. And I'm like, where's the, where's the fridge, bro? Why did it take less time to get me soup with cooked meat in it than to get the, the shit that's in the fridge that I can like see with my eyes? It's because Donbo's cooking up their own Coke Zero. <laughs> Were they busy? Of course, it's Dombo. They're always busy. 
I gotta say, by the way, I swagged up at the... I think Dune 2 got me inspired. My wife and my parents and I went out for uh, ramen. My wife ordered a cold tea, waited 10 minutes, hot tea came out. Next time server came around, I said, oh, by the way, my wife ordered a cold tea. I was going fucking Lizan Al Gaib mode on it. I was using the voice. They said, sorry, sorry. It kind of, like, listen, it, I wouldn't say it annoyed me, but I was a little surprised. Because they had you order on, like, this paper menu, which I'm sure is to reduce confusion. So my wife circled tea as her drink. And then the server who took it was like, sir, do you want cold tea or hot tea? And I said, my dear, would you like cold tea or hot tea? And she said, cold. And then I watched this man write cold down on the piece of paper. Imagine my surprise 10 minutes later when a hot tea came out. Hold. I, like, I, at that point, I just think maybe you got a problem with the ordering system. Mistakes happen, don't get me wrong, but... Okay, hold. What's the weather like? It's Vancouver, what do you think? <laughs> Hold, 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 okay. Get ready to learn it, buddy. That was a hold, bro! Weather was nice yesterday. The weather was nice yesterday. It was gorgeous. Me on NFL Sundays, so true. Nick Bosa watching game footage of the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a hold! Yep. Hold. <laughs> I'm not making any other jokes about <laughs> Nick Bosa, okay? The jokes make themselves. Holy shit, we're past the girder. You missed an, an entire other 10-hour arc of General Malaise. The girder is, is old trauma, bro. The wheel is, is the newest trauma, and we're past that, too. Do hockey fans say they know puck? Mm, no, I don't believe they do. I don't believe they do. But like nobody actually watches hockey anymore. They just look up like um, player cards on JFresh to win arguments. Watching the games and forming like your own opinion on an entertainment product, like that takes forever, bro. Why do that when instead you could just go Google.com, JFresh, Patrick Laine and be like, see, Patrick Laine is only a 21 this year. Call me crazy. I'd rather have Carson Soucy on my team. Hold, hold. I just say my team's players are better than their team's players. No, you got it all backwards. In hockey, everybody on your team is a bum. But that being said, at the trade deadline, yeah, they're probably worth a first plus your uh, trading partner's best prospect. Bro, top four defenseman, the asking price is the person that you drafted fourth overall last year plus next year's first. That's what it's going to cost to get Nikita Zadorov, okay? Hold, hold. Did you see the guy yesterday who said Zach Hyman only scored 50 goals because his family is rich? You know what's crazy? I don't mean to insult Zach Hyman. He's, he's ripping it up this year. But there is actually probably a case for that. 
Hockey has a reputation to begin with for something you can only really get into if your family has means because the equipment is really expensive compared to something like soccer, for example. And you got to buy new equipment like every year or two. Not to mention the ice time and all the travel involved. Um, so maybe his, his family being rich allowed him to get good at hockey. And then, ipso facto, you find yourself on the Edmonton Oilers power play number one, playing the screen, getting fed by uh, Connor McDavid, the best player in human history, and Leon Dreisaitl, like the 93rd best player in human history. I'm not saying he doesn't have talent. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Would you let your daughter play hockey? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. It just... If she wanted to, I would. But I'm not going to encourage her to do it because I think being a hockey parent is really hard. I had friends in, in high school who played hockey. And, like, in the ninth grade... They would have hockey practice at like 6.15 a.m. So they would do like 90 minutes of hockey practice, shower, then get on the bus and go to school. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know. And none of those fuckers made the NHL. So like the ROI on that was really bad. I'm sure it was rewarding. Don't give in. They, they had bonding at the same time, but... In high school, I had hockey stuff five days a week. It's, it is crazy. But I think, like, it's all crazy these days, man. Like, my nieces are in fencing, and we literally, like, can't see their parents anymore. Because every weekend, they're like, yeah, we can't do that. We have, like, a fencing tournament. Sometimes the fencing tournament is local. Sometimes it's a state away. Sometimes they're, like, hopping on an airplane to go to the East Coast to... To, to do fencing. I think it's just, if you, if you get like competitive in anything, like any juvenile sport, like people go crazy for it. Hold. Oh. <laughs> Women's fencing equals guaranteed college scholarship. Good choice. I think that's why they got into it in the first place. Was like, you know, their parents are very academically minded. So they're, they're, they're scholastically training my nieces. But also like, uh, you know, if you can get like a back door into a good school via athletics, then that would be good for them. But now I think they just fucking love fencing, bro. Which is great. You know, they're deriving some self-esteem from it. But I am like, man, your parents must be, like, really tired. You, you, you know, work 10-hour days, five days a week, have dinner on Friday night, Saturday morning, 4 a.m., drive, like, four hours to a fencing tournament, sit in the bleachers for eight hours, sleep in the Holiday Inn Express, sit in the bleachers for eight hours, drive home, go back to work 7 a.m. Monday morning. Like, that's, that's dedication, man. And every time I see my brother-in-law, I'm like, how are you doing? And he's like, I'm pretty tired. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> that makes sense. It is family time, though. You're not, you're not wrong about that. Okay, hold. Oh, <laughs> I think I need like two, I need to grab it with both hands or something. You can hold on the ice to slow yourself down. Oh, I could start higher, try to land like on the vertical and then Tomo down. 
Oh, I think I think you got it. I think you got to minimize your your speed, not by minimizing the height of your jump, but rather by having some Tomo tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. Are you done logging on Letterboxd? Excuse me. I think you'll find that I logged Dune two, not but three or four days ago. No, not Goon 2, Rise of the Enforcer. What'd you give it? Yeah. Five out of five heart, bro. I think it's a landmark piece of cinema. Hold. Hold. Oh. <laughs> Did any part have you crying? No, I'm, I'm an easy crier in movies, but Dune primed me for different emotions. It kind of primes you for like getting swept up in the fervor instead of like weeping, I think. But any like understated indie drama, like I'm, I'm crying without a doubt. But Dune was not like that. Dune is more like, you know, you feel yourself being a Fremen, uh, being incited to start the holy war. And then after it, you're like, that was sick. And then you start to think about it, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, too, am susceptible to propaganda. Oh, we split the uprights, bro. Hold, hold, hold. What'd you think of Barbarian? I liked it a lot. I think I gave it four stars and a heart. It was either a three and a half or a four stars and a heart. Deep dipped in Fremen spice oil. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Name 100 Fremen. Okay, easy. Uh, Stilgar, uh, Chani, uh, Paul Atreides. At a certain point, um, 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 Chani's friends, fuck. <laughs> Jamis, thank you, Jamis. Lady Jessica, well, I don't know. I have to check with the Dune heads on that one. Is Lady Jessica considered a Fremen? She was not given a, a Fremen name, or am I mistaken? And she's a Fremen, but she was never given a Fedakin name. Hold. Alia, she might be a Fremen. It depends whether she's born in Fremen territory, right? That's like a, it's a birth certificate situation. I mean, I would say that she's Caledonian, but I mean, it, it depends on the hospital where she ends up popping out, I think. Yes! <laughs> Swing, swing from the tables of my heart. Inspired by a <laughs> Three and a half stars for Banshees of Inisharan is kind of criminal. Um, I, I'm just... I, listen, I could do what everybody else does and go, hey, I recognize this movie is beloved, so I'm going to give it a high score even if I'm not vibing with it. I had to be honest. I gave it a, I gave it a three or a three and a half. I like Martin McDonough movies. Me personally, I'm happy you like Banshees of Inisherin a lot. My ideal Banshees or my ideal Martin McDonough movie is Three Billboards. You could call me a basic Andy for that if you want, but 
Hello, Daniel. Hello. What, what's the how for? Are you mad because I didn't put some respect on In Bruges? In Bruges is a great movie. I know you love it. That's a tricky situation right there. Never mind, it's an easy situation. Thoughts on Damien Chazelle having two of the two of the what most movies on Letterboxd? I'm just gonna be straight up with you. I haven't seen Babylon, but Whiplash is goaded. And I love La La Land. I, I understand. Hold. <laughs> I understand the cynicism surrounding La La Land. A lot of people have negativity uh, regarding musicals to begin with, or they don't like Ryan Gosling, or they think it's like a movie uh, that Hollywood loves to make movies about Hollywood. But all of La La Land for me is great. The last 30 minutes of, of La La Land is like transcendental. Dan turned off your stream. I actually, I don't even understand what he's mad about. Is he, is he a, a La La Land hater or is he upset that I'm goaded, bro? He's upset that you're goaded? <laughs> I don't even know like what I, what I did that that got to him. Like none of this stuff, I mean it doesn't seem like it even holds a candle to the freaking the wheel, bro. The wheel was a, was a nightmare. Okay, we got to pick a path here. Chib talking about Jackbox. <laughs> hold, hold, hold. He did have 4,000 points yesterday. I'm not even knocking him. I think he, he did okay on the questions in the first round, but then the wheel screwed him and it's just like, it's hard to recover from, from the wheel saying like, today's not your day, you know? I've been there. Hold a little, a little closer to this side. Thank you. The hell is this? Lady Jessica's pacifier. Ooh, hold, tell me you're holding without telling me you're holding. <clears throat> this is the jump I'm stuck on. Okay, good, good intel. So I know how to manage expectations. At some point, I'm going to have to pee. But the piss has been very helpful so far. Close. Hold. Hold here then. Okay, I gotta go pee. It just has to be done. I'll be back in just, I'm, I'm gonna rush it. I'll be back in 71 seconds.
Sorry, I got a Coke Zero too. I got to be honest, I also, I, I took a little longer than expected because I put deodorant on. It's been a sweaty stream so far. First, I had to beat the misogyny allegations. And then we've been, I mean, this is, it's not called an easy game about climbing. Read deodorant. I mean, listen, I don't feel great about putting deodorant on, on top of sweat, but it's either that or take a shower like right now, which is not going to happen. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Here's my thoughts on it. If you get to the, if you can reodorant the sweat in under like 90 minutes, you're going to be okay. But you can't like go to bed, like take a shower, have a day, go to bed, wake up and be like, I smell and then put deodorant on on top of that. That smell is already baked in to the skin. You need to do like a, a skin reset in the shower. Oh, that was close. Tomo technology. That's fine. Just wash your pits. It, I, I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't take. You can't just wash your armpits. It was like by the time you just wash your armpits, you might as well have just gotten in the shower and taken like a two minute shower. Because, like, if you're taking your shirt off in the sink and then just putting, like, water on your hand and going like this, like, that your pants are getting dirty, you got, you know, like, water stains on your khakis and stuff like that, you might as well have just taken, like, the extra 15 seconds to completely disrobe, hop in the shower, like, soap up for real, get out and dry off, like. Hold. Just use a washcloth. Maybe you got, like, maybe you're not a real stinker. I think if you buy, if you take a shower, I, I won't say you, I'll say me. If I take a shower, the armpits are good for 23 hours. They're good till the next shower. If I try to just, like, rub a washcloth on already pre stunk pits, it buys you 45 minutes at most. And you don't get the, the base level of freshness that you get in the shower. In an emergency, it's better than nothing. But it doesn't give you the same kind of refractory period that a shower does. It's a two-hand jump. I'll do my best. You also have to think, like... Hang on. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah. We got a lot of momentum on that. You may be right. Whoa! <laughs> You've also got to think, like, I'm not particularly tall, but I'm like, I don't know, I'm probably 45th percentile yeah. adult male height. But that puts me like 70th percentile, or maybe, I might even put me like 90th percentile for women's height. So, like, my nose is fairly far away from my armpits. But if I'm, like, walking through a crowd or something like that, there's going to be people whose noses are passing by at, like, armpit height. So I, I really try to maintain my, my hygiene. You know, for the good of society. What are you doing differently in a shower than with a washcloth? Well, I don't know. A washcloth has like four milliliters of water on it. I can probably send like eight liters of water down my armpits. Then the all-in-one cold brew coffee plus energy drink plus soap plus shampoo plus conditioner plus moisturizer on top of that. Then you put another eight liters of water on top of that. Dipped in. So true. So true. Dipped in. 
So you love wasting water? Yeah? I suppose. Hold. Giga Chad? I'm not going to let chat get on my case for wasting water. My showers are fucking short. Because I don't have any hair. So I'm guaranteeing that I use less water in the shower than you. Now, overall, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, okay? I'm not going to get into like a carbon footprint off. I've been on too many cruises in the past few years. But showers specifically, I'm not willing to be shower shamed. I don't, I don't think this is a too handy. Just being honest. I'm dead. Like, like he has passed away. I don't know where to go, man. I don't know where to go. I feel like I'd, I'd rather go this way because I know it's at least safe down here. <laughs> I don't know. The other way might have taken me down a, a tunnel that could lead me back to the girder for all I know. So all right, we go again. It's not even noon yet. We're doing so much better. <clears throat> hold, hold. Yeah. Is he named 100 women yet? Blink and you'll miss it. What'd you have for breakfast? You're really cooking today? Costco protein bar, uh, original bagel with Philadelphia herb and garlic cream cheese, and one banana. Okay, an attempt was made. I honestly can't get down. I'm not calling anybody out, but I couldn't get down with the... Um, the discussion yesterday where like all of my friends that I played Jackbox with admitted that they don't eat breakfast and they're trying to like convince each other that not eating breakfast is the way. I'm here to tell you. It was before you got there, Simvicta. They were all like, yeah, I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. It's better that way. Everybody's different, but like I would recommend it is all I'm going to say. I stopped eating breakfast in college. Yeah, but you'll start again. I stopped eating breakfast in college too, because sometimes you fucking wake up at like 1.30 p.m. But once you actually have like a not cooked sleep schedule, you may find yourself returning to the breakfast minds. I just have a shake. I got news for you, brother. You're on my team. That's breakfast. I never went back. Info request, how old are you? Because if you're like, I never went back and you're 23, what do you mean you never went back? You never left, brother. That was good, it was actually too good. I never went back, I'm 35. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. Everybody's different, but you're wrong. Eating breakfast is good. But I'm not hungry? Well, in that case. But like, do you ever think that you're not hungry because you don't eat breakfast? Like, you're not hungry because your body is like, why even send the hungry signal? Like, he's going to ignore it anyway. I'd skip lunch before I skip breakfast. You wouldn't... No, no, no. That's false. See, I don't want you on my team. Because I think, I think you're being disingenuous. If you ate breakfast, you can't skip lunch. Because as soon as you eat, you started the food treadmill for your body for the day. If you eat breakfast, you have to eat lunch or your body will punish you. 
it's easier to skip breakfast because you've already fasted for like eight to ten hours by the time breakfast rolls around. So all you got to do proportionally is, you know, send it for like another few hours. You would not catch me eating breakfast, skipping lunch, eating dinner. I would much rather skip breakfast, but I'm going to eat all three. And in fact, I'll probably have a couple of snacks throughout the day as well. What are we having for lunch today? Psh, original bagel, sliced cucumber, little deli turkey, Dijon mustard. My parents left me a bunch of vegetables. I'll probably just try to throw as many vegetables as possible on top of the, oh, on top of the, uh, the bagel just to get rid of them. Two bagels a day. I'm a two bagel a day, Andy, yeah. The first one, I honestly, not to be, like, glib, the first one doesn't count because it just gets burned up on the bike, like, by the time the ride's over. The second one counts. I'll allow that. Fasted workouts go crazy. No disrespect, if you step to me in a Peloton race... And I've had a bagel with cream cheese and a banana before the ride even starts. And you're working off 12 hours fasted. Your ass is going to be back there with hashtag pillow for wine. You're not going to be up with the rest of the egg carton. That's fine. That's fine. If you're exercising exclusively to lose weight, I understand the idea of, of fasted cardiovascular exercise. But, I mean, if we're talking about performance, you're in for a world of hurt. That's all I'm going to say. I intermittent fast, my FTP is 293. Okay, what's your weight? Don't just be posting FTP. Can I get some watts per kilogram ratio? 293 is really good, I'm not insulting that. But like, are you, are you posting a 293 at 175 pounds? In which case, like, I'll see you on the tour to fucking France. Or are you posting a 293 at like 250 pounds? That's a different story. Still good, don't get me wrong. Hold. I'm not body shaming. If anything, you're food shaming me. You're saying I beat your stats because, uh, you know, I'm just better than you. I don't need a bagel in the morning. Okay, try driving your car without gasoline in it, bro. 6'4", 225% body fat. Listen, you so-and-so. <laughs> That's the Giesling jump, right? Ooh. What's your VO2 max, though? I don't know. I've never done that. Um, I've never done the test where they hook you up to the tenant machine. What's the tenant machine? You know how they have to have like a respirator in tenant? Because when time runs in reverse, air runs in reverse too. So you have to breathe forward air. <laughs> Yay. Man, I love tenant. Me too. Genuinely. It sounds so stupid when you describe it. Yeah, I know. It's like, I don't know. It's crazy to me that there are fans of anime out there who have a problem with Tenet. Because as far as I'm concerned, Tenet is just like Chris Nolan anime. Like some of the shit that you accept in like, you know, One Piece or Dragon Ball Z, then in Tenet all of a sudden you're like, oh, the air molecules go backwards so you can't breathe them. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like you got to suspend your disbelief, bro. You're not treating it fairly. I just wish I could hear what they're saying. That's true. 
I think like I, I watched it on Netflix and it seemed like the mixing wasn't that bad. But Chris Nolan does have like a, a, a problem with audio for whatever reason. That'd be you know, I checked my uh, YouTube analytics because for tax purposes I had to figure out yeah. what percentage of my audience is watching from Canada. So thanks a lot, Canadian viewers. You're costing me fucking GST, bro. I don't know I don't know the precedent for it in the law. I just do what my accountant tells me to do, okay? American viewers, keep up the great work. Canadian viewers, may, could I interest you in a foreign streamer, please? <laughs> I'm just joking. It's not a big deal. Uh, but when I was looking at my analytics, it shows you like um, you know the audio settings for, for viewers. I couldn't believe only 5% of people are watching with subtitles. But now that I think about it, I guess it's because... The only subtitles I have are the YouTube auto-generated ones. Which are not good. Yeah, I was thinking of it as if it was like, those are curated subtitles. Because I, I watch everything with subtitles on. Whee! No cap? No cap. I watch everything with subtitles. You know what you will never hear coming out of my mouth? What did he just say? It's not going to happen. I, I'm, I hate to do this. This is going to blow up a lot of people's spots out there. Sometimes you'll be watching a movie and you'll hear what someone says, but the person you're watching the movie with will go, what did they say? Every single time, I just go, I don't know, I didn't really hear him. Even if I heard him, I'm like, I don't want to repeat what he said, because then like, I'm going to miss part of the movie. <laughs> same, 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 same. You have to be careful, though. Think you can get away with that with like your, your partner? If you try pulling that shit on your dad, he's hitting the rewind button. But then even though it was only 10 seconds ago, he gets impatient, so he mashes the rewind button like eight times, and then it goes backwards at minus 32x speed, and you're back at like the, the DVD menu, and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Takes you like 10 minutes to get back to the, the part that you were at. Dad starts up the DVD. It starts with an establishing shot with the credits over top. Brothers already got it on 64x speed. You, you miss like the whole first act of the movie. You already saw like four characters get their heads blown off and then he's hitting you, he's going all the way back and your mom's going, honey. Okay, hold. Aren't you a dad though? I'm a dad, but I respect skin, uh, skinema. <laughs> I'm a dad, but I respect cinema. I don't, uh, I don't fast forward. I mean, the credits are there. They're part of the movie, bro. Now, I, if the credits come at the end, I'm leaving the theater. But if the credits come, you know, at the beginning of the movie, that's part of setting the stage, bro. They're playing a song that's designed to take you from the mood that you were in on your way to the movie theater into like a, a susceptible state to appreciate the movie. Huge, huge. Any Balatro today? If we climb this mountain, even if we don't climb the mountain, we're probably doing Balatro today. Yes, yes. Gold stake is kicking my ass. It's a hard game. It's a very hard game. Gold stake all over my brain. Excuse me. Fade Routha be like, excuse me while I kiss this guy. He's his uncle. Anyway. Yep. 
Oh, ash, ash. Now we need to use Tomo technology. Have you seen three mics? I haven't seen three mics, but I have seen Neil Brennan's special after that, Blocks. I thought Blocks was pretty good, but I do have to say it's not really his fault. I think I'm, I'm reaching the point right now where I'm kind of like less interested in like elevated stand-up comedy and more interested in people just being funny. I've, I've gone through the, the phase and when you, there's a truly transcendent stand-up special that's a little more serious as well, it can definitely hit. Like, like Mike Birbiglia's best stuff. But there is a lot of like... Stand-up comedy that's kind of like bordering on self-help philosophy sometimes with jokes intermixed. And sometimes it hits, but when it doesn't hit, I'm like, what are we doing here? Can't you just like make up a story about something that happened to you at the airport where you're the good guy? Oh, hold. Your main comedy is silly voices. I know. If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Remember Dimitri Martin? I think Dimitri Martin's a funny guy. Like the stuff that he was making in the 2000s, it was just a different time, man. It was, just, it was when you could be the funniest guy in your high school for having a shirt that has Lenin, Stalin, Trotsky, and Karl Marx on it, getting drunk. And then when people are like, I don't get your shirt, you'd be like, brother, it's the Communist Party. Threadless Andes were going crazy back then. I had that shirt. Everybody had that shirt, man. It came for free with your fucking nine gag account. I know how it is. <laughs> I bought that as a poster from the DC Spy Museum. Dude, so I, you know, I've been traveling a little bit. I've been going to gift shops. Is there anything like more depressing than going to like a gift shop at a museum or a historical site and fucking nobody is buying anything related to like the sanctity of what the museum's about and everybody is instead just buying like break open this geode and see what's inside and fucking like like I, th I thought about that when I was at the Kennedy Space Center and like all the shit that was like you know astronauts are heroes there was nobody in front of it at all but then all the like supreme t-shirt but it says NASA instead of supreme people were like yeah it's their money, don't get me wrong. I guess I'm just being a hater. The flip side is when we went to the Pearl Harbor historical sites and everyone was buying like t-shirts with mushroom clouds over Japan. And they were like, honey, honey, it's buy four, get one free. Do you want XL or double XL? And do you want the one that has uh, Harry Truman's face and says these colors don't run? Or do you have the one that says, you want the one that says uh, December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. And it has FDR giving the middle finger in front of the American flag. Cold. Was that one real? There's some slight embellishment, but there were a lot of, I don't know if you'd call them novelty t-shirts. They were moving a lot of t-shirts at the Pearl Harbor Historic Sites gift shop last October. Not to mention the exclusive Hello Kitty Pearl Harbor Historic Sites souvenirs. Who you got for the 2024 election? Uh, I think David David Eby's gonna win in a landslide. Personally, well, is there another election happening? I don't really want to talk about it. Editor's note: David Eby is the current premier of British Columbia, representing the New Democrats. Representing the New Democrats. 
Coming in at six foot three, 178 pounds. We're so back. You got to get past the median. Not that far. Not that far. Right there. Tomotech. Great Tomotech. Great Tomotech. <clears throat> Pierre's gonna win. Yeah, but like that shit is probably not gonna be. Well, I guess it could be 2024, depending on when a vote of non confidence comes in. For uh, Americans, the Canadian system works a little differently. We used to have elections every four years, but for like the last 12 years, we have elections every uh, 18 months to 36 months. Basically, at some point, the government just says, we're tapping out, let's go again. Oh, okay, Tomotech, Tomotech, hold. That vote already happened, though. Well, yeah, like three years ago, right? When was the last federal election? It's got to be 2021, maybe, maybe 2022. Hold. Hold. There was a federal? Yeah, we've had federal elections in the past. I like that in Canada, there's a limit to the length of the campaign. I think it's like a lot of stuff. It's great in principle. But what it actually means in real life is like the, the good faith argument of it gets perverted. Like now it's just, it's a campaign 24-7, 365. Like, yeah, they're not in the middle of a campaign right now. But basically, as soon as like all the leaders have gotten selected for the political parties, like every day is a campaign. One hand swing. Two hops this time. That might have done it. That might have done it. Wasn't even close, bro. Tomotech. Okay, a little, little slip on the wrist and I'm on a ride. You're toxic, I'm slipping up. America's every two to four years, depending on how Nate Silver you are. It's so true. Iowa District 11 is having a runoff in 18 months. Hold. Hold. Ludwig was a two-hand Andy for this. The thing for me with the, with the two-hand Andy, I, I can't get the launch right on the two-hander because I always end up doing like a, a backflip. Tomotech, Tomo, Tomotech. Yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm a local politics Andy, but I'm not like a freak about it. Like I'm not going to the city council meetings and like trying to get somebody disbarred as comptroller. I just don't know what's going on. But I vote in the, in the municipal elections. I'm a, I'm a municipal, provincial, federal Andy. I'm a lyrical, physical, feminine, lesbian Eminem. Getting sunshine in my perennium. Singing about the new millennium. Harrison Ford under the floorboards. <laughs> For four door Ford Explorer. Oh, okay, we're, we're slipping up, but we got some serious momentum there. Are these real Eminem verses? Yep. It's from uh, Stan. A song known as Stan. Uh, 
I think it's easier one-handed. Me talking about uh, tennis backhands. Hold, 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 hold. <sighs> Two-handed Andes could never. So true. Pete Sampras ass. Bisexual Morpheus. Talking two-handed backhands with Anna Kornikova. Harrison Ford under the floorboards of your four-door Ford Explorer. Lyrical. Spiritual feminine lesbian Eminem. <laughs> Please. Please. Hold. Oh, there was some serious height on that one. Baron Harkonnen dipped in Mama Liz's oil, oil. I gotta see Dune Part 1 again, man. I don't know if it's just people trolling, but Kate was talking about... And it, Librarian said this, but then also another person said it independently. She was talking about Dune Part 2 to her chat. And two people in chat, one of which was Librarian, one of which was another person, said, do I have to see Dune Part 1 to understand Dune Part 2? Yes. Yes, you do. And honestly, you should be like happy to, that there's two movies because the first one's really good too. But you absolutely have to see the first one to understand the second one or you are going to be fucking confused. Or you, true, you could read the first half of the book instead. That one was not even close. Tomotech. I was already confused and I saw the first one. Me too. But I like when movies do that. At least, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a plot Andy. <laughs> I guess I am in some ways. But I'm more of like a how does this movie make me feel Andy. Like my wife started asking me great questions about the movie. After we watched it. And I was like, I never thought about it that way, but I had a great time. She was like, well, why would the emperor give Arrakis to uh, Paul Atreides' father if he was worried about the Atreides becoming too powerful? And I was like, fuck, I never thought about it that way. Then I Googled it really quick and I was like, well, by giving uh, Arrakis to the Atreides, it actually created a situation where they could easily do like a false flag operation where nobody could possibly, anyway. It's not spoilers, it's in the first four minutes of the first movie. <clears throat> okay, hold. It's also a book from 1912. So true. This one's for you, Dan Giesling viewers. Thank you for the raid, Daniel. Thank you for the raid. Dan, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not in a race with you. We're, we're both in a race against ourselves. This is hard, man. This is, it's, they don't call it a simple game about climbing. And I will say, I probably have more playtime in the game than Dan now. Because Dan has definitely played it for more streams. But sometimes Dan plays like seven games per stream. So every game gets like you know, 42 minutes. Hold, hold. We're holding. He has over 30 hours in it. But does he have 30 hours of playtime? Or does he have like 18 hours of playtime 
and then 12 hours of leaving the game open after he left his office. Which I'm not criticizing him for because I do that all the time as well. closing in on that one it's not Sean's fired a lot of people out there are allergic to histamines so we can't close our games perhaps we should get like a, a rotating series of volunteers that could like pro bono come to our house and close our games for us for days when we just don't have the mental energy to to close our games Hold. Yeah. Hold. Next time, we get him next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are still arguing about DoorDash on my yeah. timeline. I love it, man. The DoorDash discourse, I, I fall for it every single time. People, I'm sorry, listen, I have some sympathy for it. But when people are like, it's actually harder than you would expect to make a microwave meal. You got to open up the box, take the shit out. Sometimes you got to grab a fork and poke holes in the plastic. Sometimes you got to, the microwave controls can be very overwhelming. Sometimes you have to cook it for 90 seconds and then take it out and give it a stir and then you got to put it back in and you've already thrown the box in the garbage you got to take the box out of the garbage which is not sanitary and i'm like oh fuck brother <laughs> no disrespect okay if i work for the irs every single person that tweets that is getting audited tomorrow because i do not believe that if, the, if they can't do the frozen meals they simply are not paying their taxes or at least filing them because it's not, it's just not happening. I, I, there's no world in which you're like, it's hard to make Michelinas, but you're submitting your taxes on time. That's a guaranteed audit if I worked at the IRS. Caught, caught, caught. I'm not trying to out anybody. Maybe you live in a country where they file the taxes for you, which I'm actually very jealous of, but they probably pay someone to do it. Yeah, but then you got to send them like the fucking PDFs and the documents and you got to collate all this shit from your bank and stuff like that. Like it's it's harder than making Marie Collender's chicken pot pies is all I'm trying to say, bro. Hold. I filed my taxes today. I feel bad. Um, this is a true story. I, I mean, honest, I've, I know I've said it before. I actually think that accountants are like some of the biggest heroes in our society in some ways, mostly because they're doing work that I don't have the qualifications or the desire to do. So I'm, I'm putting mad respect on the accountants. That being said, sometimes my behaviors and my words don't match up. My accountant sent me a request for more information it's probably like the first week of March. I put off replying to it for two and a half weeks. Then yesterday, I was like, I got to get on this shit. It took me less than 10 minutes to grab all the documents that he asked me for. I sent them back. He sent me an email. at So that email came out at like 4 p.m. My accountant then replied to me at like 11.48 p.m. And was like, here's how much you owe, please send it to the government before Friday. Like the dude literally was waiting on like, <laughs> he just needed me to take 10 minutes out of my day to get a few PDFs and I just dragging my heels. Every fucking reply starts with sorry for the delay as usual. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not proud of it. It's just, it's just the way it went down, man. But can I tell you something? This doesn't necessarily, it doesn't atone for it completely. But when I get the invoice, there's no net fucking 45. There's no net 60. I pay that shit the second I see the email. 
That's how I show my appreciation, okay? We're not doing any accounts payable, accounts receivable, accounting fiction. I'm not getting the 30-day GIC that pays 0.03% so I can skim a little bit off the top. That shit's getting paid immediately. <clears throat> Next time. Next, we get him next time. Do you tip 20%? No, I feel like with accountants, the tip is built in. I'm not saying they're lying. I think this is just the way the government, or not the government, but all business works. The billable hours, I know you weren't nose to the grindstone for every minute of every billable hour. There's a little gentleman's sort of fudge factor that goes into it. If you worked for 38 minutes and you checked your phone two times and you took a bathroom break, that's a billable hour. There's, that, that's, there's your tip. There's your 20% tip right there. I'm not going to observe you and be like, hey, 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 that you only actually worked for 31 minutes on that billable hour. I trust you. And then in return, you don't fire me as a client when I'm a little late sending you documents sometimes. It's the way of the world, man. Next time. <clears throat> I started subtracting bathroom breaks from my invoices and it's been a dream. All right, we go again. <laughs> why, why are you subtracting your, your bathroom breaks from your invoices? You got to piss to work. Oh, not subtracting. Okay, all right, all right. I misread it completely. As long as you're not taking too many liberties with it, your, your piss time, that's part of your working time, bro. I get paid during my piss breaks. I'm a lawyer and I bill when I'm in the shower because my shower thoughts are work thoughts. <laughs> Listen, if you work on the file for 45 minutes and take a 15 minute shower pondering, I think that's a billable hour. If you wake up at 6.30 in the morning, take a shit and then hop in the shower for 30 minutes, that's not a billable half hour in my world. But that's, who's going who's gonna to keep you honest though? I don't hate you for it. I'm just saying. Hold. I do it. I, I have a, a suggestion to fix the tax code, by the way. But it's, it goes without saying, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know probably the most fucked up shit in the tax code. I'll give you that. But I'll tell you one thing for free. We got to stop letting businesses write off a portion of dinner receipts because they talked about business. It's just that how, how many tens of millions of dollars annually is lost in revenue just because of lies, bro. You go out and have like seven beers with a client, all of a sudden like half of that shit comes tax free. Like, how does that make sense? It, it simply doesn't make sense. You just say that because you don't get business dinners? Well, listen, maybe I'm the fool. But like, at a certain point, you know, I, like, my accountant is like, what's this like $110 receipt? And I was like, oh, we were at PAX East and we went out to Legal Seafoods. Did you talk about work? Well, yeah, I guess. But like, I don't know. I just kind of don't want to risk it. I, I don't want to be six years after the dinner and have Justin Trudeau be like, so what'd you guys talk about? I'll be like, Fuck it. I don't know, brother, this was a long time ago. We were hammered. <laughs> How would they know? It just seems like, a, I don't know. I, I feel like it's against the spirit of the game, man. Because like at some point, technically, like I'm self-employed. Like, if you use that logic, can't you just write off, like, your whole fucking life? I was talking about it with Justin. You know, like, we, as streamers, we should be able to write off all of our expenses related to pets. 
Because if we don't buy our pets pet food and they die of starvation, we're going to lose our jobs in the court of public opinion. So as far as I'm concerned, that, shit's, that shit should be writing it off, bro. But I don't do that. This was actually the first year in a while where I um, didn't, or I, I did collate my Steam expenses for the year. Because like the past few years, I've been like, I'm not going through every damn receipt for a $6.99 indie game. That's crazy. Then this year I found out there's literally a button in Steam that is just like, here's all your purchases this year. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that I'll do. That I will do. Ryan, you don't get it. This isn't like a, a streamer, like out of touch thing. This is just the way like this. This is real world shit, bro. How much was it? I don't know. I probably spent like 1300 bucks on Steam last year. But like, I'm not going to start putting on like, you know, dinners on the at the fucking McDonald's or something on the taxes. Because then for $200 at McDonald's, my accountant's got to look at that shit, and then for some reason they take the receipts and they write them into their own document, which probably takes them 15 minutes. Then they, like, print to PDF and put it in, like, a, an encrypted archive, and then all of a sudden, to claim that $200 of McDonald's, I just paid, like, $180 to my accountant. <laughs> which I love it for him, because then he's buying shit in the economy and keeping the world going around. I'm just saying you got to look at the, the economics of it sometimes. Hold. Hold. Scurry. <laughs> No, I don't hate accountants. It's the opposite. I think they're heroes, which is why I think they... I don't, I'm not saying they do, but I think they should be able to take liberties. Because I think it's kind of... I don't know. That's how like a service-based economy works, right? For certain professions, you pay them like, you know, X dollars per hour. But realistically, they were there for an hour, but they were only focusing for like 18 minutes. It's that little fiction in there that keeps the, that keeps the world turning around. Me as a software engineer? I hear you. I mean, it's crazy, right? I never worked in like a, a serious white collar job. I basically did like admin. But even then, there were days where, like, there wasn't shit to do. You still got paid. <laughs> and then if someone's like, what did you do today? You're like, I've been working on this file for, like, eight hours. And it's not a lie. You were working on the file for eight hours because you didn't have shit else to do, man. Oh. Hold. Not me using a mouse jiggler on MS Teams, so it seems like I'm working more. Productivity software is fucked up. And I, I don't know. Maybe people are going to say that I'm just trying to farm base. But I think the onus for you to notice that I'm not doing work is on, like, my, my manager. Right? If you don't notice, based on my output that I'm not working as hard or as long as I could be, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing what was asked of me. I'm performing adequately because you're not noticing how bad I am at my job. If you need a piece of software to tell you like, oh, you know, he didn't move his mouse for 90 minutes today. Well, really, like the software should have your job, no disrespect. It's a really easy take to farm plus twos with, though, because, like, there's no managers in chat. <laughs> They're all at the golf course. <laughs> oh. 
told. I, I don't know. I guess I... Maybe it's naive, but I kind of, like, harken back to, like... Or I, I mythologize living in a... I don't want to say a less scientific, but maybe, like, a less analytic era. Where, like, if you were a little bit bad at your job, what were the consequences? You work at the company for 45 years, you get a retirement party, they give you a gold watch. You go eat at a restaurant, what do you say? Hey, this food was pretty good. You don't say, oh yeah, it's really, it's pretty good, but I've had better egg foo young at uh, this place. And then, oh no, actually a lot of people are talking about this new restaurant's got a lot of buzz down and blah, blah, blah. Like you just, you know, like back before the information age, people were just sending it, bro. They didn't have the tools to, to not send it. I'm about the 90s max on getting lunch. Dude, I hear you. Go to a restaurant that has their menu in Comic Sans. He's Ted Kaczynski posting again. I'm not Ted Kaczynski posting, okay? I'm not saying you have to hand it to him. Don't you remember? I got in trouble with my chat for saying Ted Kaczynski was a bad dude. I was like, regardless of his political opinions, I don't think you should blow people up with bombs. And people were like, bad take. Yeah. <laughs> Hold. 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 Again. What about Hitler? Okay, you can blow Hitler up with a bomb. You know, I so the NL lore that you probably already know if you've been watching for a while, every night to fall asleep, I listen to an audiobook. The audiobook is The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. I'm at the part for like the 17th time because I've, I've read, well, listened to this like 70 hour book so many times because I've been listening to it for like seven years. I'm at the part where they're doing the von Stauffenberg plot to kill Hitler. And I get that they were like working their ass off to kill Hitler, but it really seems like they fucking sucked at it. Like nobody could just take a gun and kill him. Like it took a hundred dudes making like a massive conspiracy and then they're like built a bomb and put it into a briefcase. And then they were like, no, 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 we can't do it today because we won't get Goebbels and fucking Goring. We want to get like a, a triple. So they said, OK, take the briefcase back out. And then they had like they, they finally got the bomb to explode. But somebody moved it next to like a, a really thick table leg. So like it only kind of flesh wounded him. Like, you, no disrespect. You know, you're like. It's probably like a self-sack move. They couldn't have just shot him. I guess they just, they wanted to have some self-preservation as well, but like, what's up with the Looney Tunes shit, bro? Did you hear about the Fidel Castro shit? They tried to blow him up with a cigar bomb. What the fuck, man? <laughs> That's true, that's okay. So they did want to eliminate like the entire brass and then like have a military coup happens to ensure that it wasn't just like a transfer of power. I do understand, I guess I understand that. When you're listening, like it's the longest chapter in the book. It's like four hours and 15 minutes long and it's basically about them getting like cold feet. And then like when they actually do it, like... One dude is just like, what's this briefcase doing here? And he just moves it to the other side of the room, bro. Why are you on the same book? I don't know. I'm a routine-driven Andy. And uh, it's interesting to, you know, learn. So when, you, when you're born, it's like arriving at a party... 
that's been going on for like millennia, right? So sometimes you're like, why is that dude got a lampshade on his head? Why does this country have borders that look like this? So you learn history and all of a sudden you're like, oh, this, that's, that shit all happened like before I got here. It gives you like some more context for the world in which you live. Why are you reading it again? Why are you, why are you policing my, you've probably read fucking The Wheel of Time like 17 times. All of a sudden the bro wants to learn something about human history and it's troubling. Go back to fucking having wet dreams about Galadriel, bozo. Did you hear a man scream there? <laughs> Have you read any 21st century novels? What an insane question. Yes. Halo, the fall of reach. Also, the old men in the sea, or the old man in the sea. Also, Handmaid's Tale. Also, Slaughterhouse Five. Also, 1984. Also, Animal Farm. Also, Of Mice and Men. Also, To Kill a Mockingbird. Also, Brave New World. Fucking also, probably. Oh, no. Oh, 20th. <laughs> you didn't say 20th century. You said 21st. Halo the Fall of Reach. That probably came out in like 2003. Hold. Well, this sucks ass. <laughs> 2001. Let's go! <laughs> I've read 20, 21st century nonfiction. Morgan Housel's The Psychology of Money. I, that's true, I have read House of Leaves. That must be a 21st century Andy. A random walk down Wall Street. That's just from 1977. Put some respect on Burden Malkiel. Thoughts on everyone just reading smut now? My thought is, who cares, I guess. I don't know, I don't consider it a big deal. Who the fuck is everyone? <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. It's 12, okay, we should, we should. Drop it and then play some Balatro. Still made good progress today. Slash marker. A difficult game. <laughs>